Okay, it's about 5.30 in the morning. I um, have about an hour before sunrise and got out here early so I could get set up. Um, this is the time of year when we get a lot of water in here, so it's perfect for floating around in the boat and looking for some scenes with, um, you know, with the sky reflecting on the water. Just love that. So right now I'm just assessing the sky and I've got some clouds going on, kind of thin veiled clouds. Uh, yesterday I was here and there were some storms that came in from the southwest and as the sun came up, um, just illuminated those those beautiful clouds. It was really cool before before they got too close that I had to you know go run for cover. But this morning it's the sky is different. I think we're gonna see some colors. I'm looking right now towards what will be sunrise. So um, so I'm gonna get set up for that, and uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hey, I know it's hard to see me here. Um, I've kind of scouted around and um, I think I found a spot that I'm gonna try to shoot um, with the sunrise over in this direction. So um, I've got my tripod uh, extended as far as it'll go. I'm gonna put it in the water and um, attach the camera and I'm gonna try to raise it um, a little bit more and I may have to stand up in the boat. Um, the reason why I want to raise it up is I've got these little mangroves in front of me and I want to separate them from the distant horizon. You've got this, this flat land here and uh, it just, you know, there's no separation so there's no depth to it. Um, so if I can get higher and get that higher perspective, I can see, um, I can see more water, which means I'm going to see more reflections and I've got these trees that, you know, will be more of a foreground and the horizon will be off um, in the distance, a little bit higher up in the frame. So, um, so that's how I try to compose these images. Uh, so, um, so I'm gonna get set up to do that right now. Now, before I get out here, um, I attach my, uh, uh, my L bracket is on my camera. I also have my um, cable release. And also I put the filter, uh, filter holder on there in case I want to add a filter um, at some point. Okay, and the main thing is I want to make sure that my cable release doesn't drop in the water. What I'm going to do, since I can't look through the viewfinder, I have to rely on this LCD panel, is I've got my um, live histogram showing up on the screen, and it's that histogram that's going to help me with my exposure. Okay, because remember, the back panel is, is good. When you have live view on, you can at least see your composition, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's, it's not going to look... Well, I hope I didn't drop anything... It's not going to look um, exactly like that out of camera. So now what I'm going to do is I've got my filters. Is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a, a graduated on there and darken the top, the sky. So I'm able to stand up in my boat because I have the boat tied off with the stick it pins and. There really is no way that it's going to tip over. Um, it is a little tippy, so I do have to balance myself. That's why I use this particular uh, model canoe, because it's very sturdy. And so if I just uh, put my feet up against the edge, you know, as wide as I can get them, um, I can, you know, I, I'm pretty steady up here. I, I certainly wouldn't want to hold a camera and try to shoot with this, although I have. Um, but... You know, at least I can stand here and, um, you know, use my cable release. So now what I'm doing is I'm adjusting my filter, making sure that I have a straight horizon. I, 
I prefer, much prefer to look through the viewfinder, but not today. I'm going to set my ISO down to 100. I've got my aperture. Right now I have it at 14 and my shutter speed. I want to try to keep my shutter speed fairly slow. Right now it's about 1.3 just to smooth out that water because what's happening uh, with me standing in the boat is I can't really keep it steady so you get these ripples in the water and um, sometimes that's okay but kind of like that cleaner look so smooth it out with about a one second uh, exposure. Okay I've put um, another I put a three stop uh, filter on there and um, now I've got uh, about a two second exposure. Uh, this is going to be a tough one with this wide angle lens and these mangroves in the foreground are kind of dark so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple exposures. I, I don't use the bracketing. Um, I usually just take a couple of shots uh, you know, and look at the histogram to help me uh, decide on that as well. It would be okay taking one shot. Uh, the dynamic range on this camera is, is pretty good. I see I had this loose so I'm going to tighten that and recompose because I moved it. So you want to make sure everything's tight, um, the ball head's not moving. Now the disadvantage of my setup is that if I decided that, um, wow, you know, with, especially when the clouds are moving, that all of a sudden the composition uh, changes and I'm not in an ideal location. If I wanted to move, it's really a big deal because I have to take the camera off the tripod, uh, get it back in the boat. I have to um, get the tripod out of the water, get the stick it pins out of the water, and then move to the new location and reset up. So. I really, when I'm out here doing this, I, I really try to get into a spot where I may have a couple of choices just by turning the, the camera. In fact, the sky is kind of interesting over here. I just don't know with um, the mangroves if, you know, if I have anything decent and it's harder for me to see if I do or not. And what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the, uh, the mangrove to, to get that to be the sharpest. And at f14, um, the sharpness is, is really seen throughout. Uh, and, and back there in the background, um, there's nothing prominent that, you know, uh, if it's not as sharp or ideally sharp, um, it really, you know, I don't think it makes that much of a difference. So I just take one shot usually. Sometimes I'll do two, but... When I get home and I'm looking at the photos, I find that really uh, I have one good image and I might as well just work with that. So also, um, you know, I have my stick it pins keeping my boat in one place and that also keeps the boat from touching the tripod. So, so nothing is touching the tripod. It's, it's perfectly still and it's in there nice and solid that um, I never worry about it moving. This is really good for balance. <laughs> um, you know, I'm almost 60 years old, so uh, anytime I can practice my balance, I think that's a good thing. So I'm, I'm probably gonna have two shots that I'm gonna have to process together. And uh, that's where I like to use the, um, the luminosity masks in Photoshop. So uh, if you're not familiar with those, just do a little research and it makes your life a lot easier as far as post-processing goes and you know the cameras today are, are very good as far as dynamic range but um, you know still you know you need a little boost you need a little help uh, so taking a couple exposures is is um, sometimes you know um, uh, necessary to get that full range all right I think I'm going to go with uh, maybe one more shot here And then I might, um, you know, just kind of paddle around and see if I can find some other things to photograph. Anyway, I hope that what I showed you today is that, um, you know, it's possible to get out there and, and photograph from a boat. Um, it probably looks really, really difficult uh, to you. And I, I can imagine that you're thinking, why even bother put up with all of that? Um, but here's the thing. If you're serious about photographing from a boat, 
um, I guarantee you, you're going to get to some areas that nobody else has gotten to. And, um, and then you just got to figure out how to photograph that. Uh, so um, my system works here. It is, you know, it does have its limitations, but, you know, it, it works. So I'm willing to put up with it. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, I might get out tomorrow one last time, but, um, but that's it for me, South Florida. I'm going to be leaving um, and traveling uh, in my home on wheels uh, until November, so for four months I'll be on the road, and I'll be photographing in places I've never photographed before, so we'll see what happens with that. Um, anyway, um, uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact me, and just get out there with your camera and have fun.